Can you skip karate belt ranks? The quick answer is, of course you can. It happens all the time. The better question is, should you? And that's another quick answer, no. Now I'm not usually this definitive, but I think I can be on this one. In a few minutes, I'm gonna tell you about my unearned rank story, and I'll share something that only up to this point our Patreon and private members know. Today's topic was actually inspired by a recent viewer question, and I want to apologize to that viewer if my answer seemed inflexible. It triggered a little nerve, and I realized of all the belt topics on this channel, this was one we haven't hit upon yet, skipping or jumping belt ranks. And this isn't just for karate, but for any milestone equivalent in any art. The question was, if my child gets hurt and is not able to practice, do they still have a chance to catch up with their class after the injury a few months later? If I understand correctly, you're asking about accelerating rank to catch up and not necessarily skipping ranks, but honestly, my answer is the same for both, so I'm just grouping both scenarios together. So there's three primary reasons why somebody would even skip rank to begin with or accelerate at a faster speed. Number one is trying to catch up to lost time. You know, we all have our struggles, we all have our timeouts, injuries, or life gets in the way. It's easy to slip and fall back, and you know, wanting to catch up is understandable. Two, knowing advanced material, going ahead and looking ahead to material and being ahead of where you are. And three, having good optics for the school or a status symbol. Unfortunately, I know a lot of schools who have promoted students faster or skipped ranks so that it looked better on the school to have higher ranks. But to answer the question directly, no, I don't believe you can make up for lost time because it's quite literally lost time. You know, if you were out for months, it's not like you can just cram for a week and suddenly be where you were, you know, three months ago, four months ago, however long it was. There is physical conditioning and growth that comes with that time. It's not just memorizing the material. And if you've been out for a while, it might actually take you longer because unless you've been constantly refreshing your material, you're going to you're going to forget things and you're going to have to take time to refresh. And I understand, you know, the child's going to want to catch up to their classmates, but it's also it's not fair to the classmates who were there to train and they put in that work. And finally, it's not fair to your child because it doesn't teach them how to handle setbacks. And this reminds me of a story when I used to teach at a local school. I was a part time instructor. We had a child who was red belt. Um, Two, two belts away from their junior black belt. And his parents decided they left the country for a year. They took him with them. When they came back a year later, they said, you know what, we feel it's been long enough. He's been in class long enough. We want him to test his black belt now. And there was a black belt test coming up and we were like, um, but you understand he hasn't been here. So in their mind, that clock kept ticking. Even though he wasn't in class, they felt that that time counted towards his training. And they were pushing really hard. And ultimately we decided, no, that we're not gonna do that. And I even said, I'm not gonna be part of that testing board if this kid is allowed to jump two ranks after being gone for a year. The parents didn't take it very well, but eventually they, they submitted and they said, okay. But the reason was, um, he wasn't there and he'd forgotten half his material. Like when we actually tried to assess him where he was at, he couldn't remember half of what he tested for already. So right then he was already behind. Second, we had other students, we had two other kids who were on the verge of qualifying for testing and they themselves opted to wait for the next test six months later because they wanted to be extra ready. What kind of message would we have sent them if we allowed this kid to jump two ranks? No, that wasn't gonna happen. I understand there's a social friction in place where kids wanna be with their classmates and if they fall behind, it's uncomfortable and it's awkward. But imagine the friction if your child is suddenly matching them without putting in the same work. It's gonna be worse. And that ties into skipping ranks. You don't just get rank for just knowing the material and you don't just get rank just for putting in the time. They go together. You put in the time to know the material. And I unfortunately have known people who have read ahead or watched ahead and memorized the future material and flat out asked us to skip ranks. Honestly, unless that person is an absolute prodigy and I'm not saying they're not, I've actually met a couple, then simply looking ahead is not the same as being at that level. Why not? Okay, a few reasons. Incomplete skill development. Each rank represents a set of skills and techniques. Skipping can lead to gaps in knowledge and abilities, making the student less proficient and potentially more prone to mistakes. Next, the lack of foundation. You know, training is cumulative with each level building upon the previous one. So skipping ranks can result in a weak foundation as a student might miss critical fundamental skills that are necessary for the advanced techniques. Safety is a big one. You know, the martial arts involve a lot of physical activity that can be dangerous if not performed correctly. Without the proper progression, a student might not learn essential safety protocols or have even developed the right control yet. Psychological impact. Achieving a rank is a milestone that provides a sense of accomplishment and boosts confidence. Skipping can deprive students of these motivational milestones, potentially leading to decreased morale and commitment. And this actually relates to the story I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. Next, peer discrepancies. You know, in a dojo, students are usually grouped by rank, 
which ensures that they train with others at the similar level. Now, a student who skips ranks might find themselves out of sync with their peers, leading to frustration and even additional social friction within the dojo. And bad optics. You know, we talked about the good optics. If a student wears a rank that they aren't ready for, it actually reflects poorly on the school. Now, some people think that having a room full of black belts looks good for the school, but if they're moving like yellow belts, you're actually creating a negative impression. I have actually one more point to add to this, but I want to elaborate on that first one first, the incomplete skills development. You know, accelerating training can happen, but it requires dedication and daily hours of work. But just promoting people because it looks good, it does not help your school. And there was actually family, the last year, my, my former instructor, when he had the school open, the last year he was open, he actually had a family that was training with us. It was a father and their two teenage kids. And within a year, within one year, they went from white belt to brown belt. That's seven ranks. Normally, there's three to six months for each rank if they went through the proper channels, but he was kind of burnt out and he was, he was decreasing and watering down the curriculum and just passing them. Um, they did not move very well. They looked like novices. And when I saw that, that really kind of put a damper on my view at the school because it looked bad. People think the optics might look good, but the optics can actually work against you in that case. So I'm going to segue into my personal story from here. Back in 2015, I was in training for my fifth degree black belts. And I had had a long talk with my instructor because I had seen the ranks that he was giving away and how fast they were. And I was working a different curriculum. He was re retooling stuff. He was stripping things down. But he let me stay on the traditional full curriculum because that's what I wanted to learn. I wanted to see everything. And I pulled him aside and I had to talk with him. I said, look, I said, when it comes time for me to test, I want to make sure it's because I've, I've been through the whole curriculum, not just because it was a matter of time or whatever. And he agreed. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. He actually recorded for me all the lessons going forward. So I had the material, but I, you know, I still wanted to go through it. So about, you know, a month or so later, he calls me up and he's like, hey, I'm just gonna let you know, you're gonna get your fifth degree next week. And I'm like, wait, I'm still quite a bit away from learning the material. He goes, yeah, I know, but he goes, I'm going to move soon and it's now or never. And besides, uh, he goes, you've already passed all the requirements of the class of our school and there's nothing left for me to show you. And that didn't sit well with me because one, we had talked about it, and two, I felt like he was doing the same thing with me that he did with everyone else. He was just giving rank away. And this really kind of put me in a tough spot because I'm like, do I have a falling out with him and turn him down and embarrass him in front of the school? Um, I did some soul searching and I wrestled with it. And what I, the conclusion I came to was I accepted the rank on his behalf. Like I accepted the fact that he accepted me, but to myself, I still had something to prove. So, you know, I did go into class next week and he gave me the promotion and he gave me a certificate in the belt rank and I've got, you know, I've got the belt, but I didn't wear it for six months because I still had my requirements. I had met his approval. I had not yet met mine. So I spent six months hardcore studying that material, going through everything. By the end of those six months, I knew that entire curriculum. I finally felt good enough. I had accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. I had his approval, so I accepted the belt. But the thing though is, for the past nine years, it's always bugged me in the back of my mind. You know, I've got this stigma against myself now. Sometimes I feel like I haven't earned it. And I know I put that work in. I know I put that work in. I put 22, work, 22 years into earning that belt. And it's been nine since. Um, but, you know, life got in the way. You know, I fell out of training. My father got sick and passed away. You know, I had to work. So there were times where I didn't train as hard and I've forgotten some material. And I've been working my way back into it. I've been reviewing because I've put myself on a bit of an academic probation. So I've been wearing just a traditional, regular, plain black belt most of the time. Um, I'll wear I'll wear the the official one for like testing and, and, and seminars and such. But even though I know I earned it and I know I put that time in, that doubt is in the back of my head because his reason his reason bothered me. I do hope to train for you know and get six degree one day, but I don't want it until I've earned it. My point though is, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to your students, and certainly don't do that to your children. Let them earn their ranks naturally. Make it worth something to them. If there's a loss of time, there's a loss of time. Unfortunately, setbacks happen. Teaching your child to deal with that adversity and still struggle and push through is far more respectable than jumping to catch up. So I want to take that back to the last point of the reasons why you shouldn't skip rank. There's a loss of tradition and integrity. Karate is so deeply rooted in tradition and the ranking system is a big part of that heritage. When you skip, it can be seen as a disregard for that system and those traditions, and potentially it damages the integrity of the art that you're trying to represent. Yes, it's just a piece of fabric, but yes, there's also tradition attached to it. So whether you wanna to just toss it on the floor and forget about it, or spend all your time harping about belt etiquette, 
In the end, what's important is the quality of your training. So with that being said, should you skip ranks? I still say no, because if you feel it's more than a piece of cloth, and if you feel it represents something greater, then you should respect that value. And if you're from the other camp and you think it's just a piece of cloth and nothing else, then why are you worrying about rank anyway? Just focus on your training. Besides, there really is only one belt that actually matters, and probably not in the way you think.